Thanks so much for joining me today on the packaging class. So hello, my name is Avelio Matos, and you may remember me from such shows as Skillshare's Package Design, How to Sketch Concepts That Surprise and Delight, the, <laughs> the Packaging Clubhouse, Package Design Unboxed, uh, the podcast, and of course, the Packaging Weekly News with Corey Connors and Adam Peake. Well, now we're doing something completely different. We're doing something new. This is a 15 minute packaging. This is a 15 minute packaging class on LinkedIn Live where we're going to learn everything there is to know about packaging. Everything from materials, construction, how to set up different file types, manufacturing types, and how to design packaging, including regulatory and legal, and even how to select the right type of packaging for your class, uh, for your product. Um, kind of managing all these on my own here, so just bear with me. But if you've got any questions throughout the show, please put it in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. Um, today, we're gonna, we're gonna tackle some basics. What is packaging? What types, the different types of packaging? And in 15 minutes or less, you're gonna be able to tell the difference between primary packaging, secondary, tertiary, and e-com packaging. So to kick this off, what is packaging, right? Packaging has always been a vehicle that was developed for safely transporting products, essentials. So 1900s, you know, marketers realized the power of packaging. And as an industry, we haven't stopped. We haven't stopped growing. So now we're even packaging things that don't need packaging. But since packaging is a method of safe transport and safe product usage, the types of packaging that we use has actually exploded. But there are two types of packaging that we encounter daily. And there are additional types of packaging that we'll talk about. And as packaging designers, you've got to know what these two types are. So the first is primary packaging. Primary packaging is actually what contains the product. It's the last piece of packaging that consumers will interact with before they experience the product. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. You know, let's look at a few examples here. Bottles are a great example of primary packaging. So I'm gonna, I've got a couple here in front of me. You know, whether it's glass or plastic, um, it doesn't really matter, a pouch, the container itself is just containing the product. It's what gives the product shape and since a huge part of product uh, and packaging is the shape, primary packaging should be considered the, and designed as the part as part of the product. It needs to be designed as like if you want to if you want the consumer to engage with that product, like what is that going to look like? And I hadn't really looked at it that way until I spoke to Vincent Villager and we discussed the influence of shape in product packaging. Uh, on the Package Design Unbox podcast. So if you take a look at this, like olive oil, you've got, you have a $6 bottle of oil and it's got these squared sides um, uh, that allows you to fit more of these on a pallet. Um, you know, it's got the green color because it, it reduces the amount of light that comes in there. Um, and the label has more information than you're ever gonna wanna read. You know, you've got the, you've got the green glass to reduce the amount of light that comes in here. Um, and then you've also on the interior, it's got like a dual spout. So you got like a smaller hole, a larger hole. And it's a $6 bottle of, of olive oil. And then you've got a $25 bottle of olive oil. It's an elegant bottle. It's got these refined edges. You know, the, the height of this bottle definitely stands out on shelf. The simple label is going to communicate quality. This could hold Pennzoil for all I know, but the primary packaging is what validates the purchase. Cans are another example, and we'll kind of go through these, right? So these change the shape of the bottle, uh, change the shape of the product inside, and the way it reflects light differently on shelf is gonna compete more. The amount of information on the label is less on the more elegant one than it is on the, on the larger one. You know, and you know, when you look at the color, the contrast between those two really stands out versus the green on green. And this just feels cheaper than this. 
It's a matter of, of packaging. The product inside could be the same, but we really don't, you know, I can't tell you the difference other than going and uh, tasting it. But when you're shopping, you don't get the opportunity to taste it unless you're shopping at like Costco or something. Um, next is like cans. So cans are another example. Clicking through here, guys. So cans are another example of primary packaging. Personally, I love like this Stella can because you know it's small, it's mini, it doesn't have a chance to warm up. It feels great in my hand. It's got a matte print. So the way the light reflects off of it, you can kind of see that. Um, and it also has this really smart design that you don't think about when you're holding it, but the can doesn't care if you're left-handed or right-handed, right? That sounds stupid, but here's the drinking, the drinking spout. The branding is visible at all times. So if I'm right-handed or if I'm left-handed, you can always see the branding. You know, compare that with White Claw, right? There's a big difference in the perceived value. Notice the amount of copy, again, compared to the higher end product, um, the gloss versus the matte. And again, when you get into like the amount of copy, just like the virgin, uh, just like this virgin olive oil, the amount of copy that you see on lower end products is a lot more. They're trying to tell you as much as possible, grab your attention. But when you compare, you know, a higher end product, it's a lot less. So if you happen to have a lower end product and you want to design the packaging to help sell more, reduce the amount of, of uh, copy on there. And that's the case for like even dry goods, you know, check out this coffee bag. You know, this is, you know, it's a great example. There's a lot, not a lot of information on here. It smells amazing. Um, and then we get into, I just want to show you like a couple other examples of primary packaging. You know, these are all, you know, this is uh, a great example of like a lotion. You know, this shape is really what you're selling. The product inside can be a small amount of product. You know, you've got something like this that moves to dispense. You know, this feels definitely a higher end. And then you've got your, you know, another lotion. So you've got three lotions and this is definitely the less, uh, the lower end. And again, you can see the amount of copy. You can see the color, the material. This changes the perceived value from the, cons uh, from the consumer. And it just, you know, these are just really small cues that you can use to design packaging. Exactly like Hugh says, you know, you gotta let the brand sell the product. You know, you can't yell at your consumer through all of the marketing, all the copy on here. Now there's also like, there's another area. There's, you know, when you look at like dry goods, like pops, I gotta have my pops, right? This cereal box, this is no longer primary packaging. This doesn't give shape to the product, but if I open this up, and this was a full bag, but my kids totally dug into it. This bag is the primary packaging. This is what gives the product shape. This is what holds and protects the product. It's what keeps the oxygen out and keeps it from going bad. The box is just marketing. The box is just, the billboard space. So in this case, the box is now secondary packaging. And as a designer, you've got to understand the differences between the two, when to use one or the other, and how to actually apply graphics to both. Um, the pops that used to actually, as a kid, I remember the, the pops bag used to be a foil and it had some print on it. You know, now it's just the clear plastic. You've got pops on the front, you've got all this information. The secondary packaging does give it a uh, benefit because you do get huge billboard space, you've got you know an interactive space here. But really, since the since the primary packaging is is just this, and there's not a whole lot left, this is kind of useless. You know, currently we have we're having paper shortages, we're having board shortages. This is you really applying a additional material that is recyclable, but it's not necessary in this case. This could easily go in a stand-up pouch. Um, you know, and I know that a lot of brands are trying to get away from, a lot of brands are trying to get away from um, plastic and move into paper, but what they're doing is they're throwing paper at a problem that doesn't, isn't solved by paper. Um, so that's a great example of 
of that. We can eliminate the box altogether because it doesn't really serve a purpose. Um, if you've been to the grocery store, you've seen that they have big bags of cereal and um, those are just as easily, those are just as easily sold. So, you know, there are, there are replacements for this. It doesn't have to be um, a paper board. Other examples of, other examples of uh, secondary packaging. The cans are the primary, the case is the secondary. This gives you billboard space. It allows you to stack them. It allows it for easy, you know, pickup from the consumer to walk out of the store. From a graphics perspective, this packaging now has to have, you know, create a big giant billboard, right? It tells the story. It addresses um, a few different things. You've got the flavor, you've got color, contrast, logo, gigantic. So that when you walk into your BevMo, you see the big giant wave of White Claw, you know, hashtag White Claw. They got like the huge um, wave of White Claw containers. And, you know, those two are just different examples of primary, of primary and secondary packaging. Absolutely, Anthony. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. So you've got your primary, you've got your secondary. Then beyond that, you've got tertiary packaging. And tertiary packaging is really the packaging that you don't see, right? This is what's used to move your goods from the factory to the warehouse, to distribution, to retail. It's the cardboard boxes, the shrink wrap that holds the pallet together. Um, it's all the padding that keeps everything uh, you know, protected. And all that stuff gets removed before the secondary or the primary is put up on shelf. It's before it's put up on display. Lastly, you've got your e-com packaging. Now I got this killer box from App Harvest. So this is an RSC box. You know, this is really what's replacing retail stores is e-com packaging. Yes, corrugated, just like uh, you know, Corey's TikTok hashtag, um, corrugated. So this is really what's replacing the retail store is e-com packaging. Now e-com packaging can come in a variety of different constructions. You've got like this RSC, there are uh, uh, RELFs, you've got your poly mailers, you've got your paper mailers. I've got another example here. So you've got like this giant e-com box, you know, which opens here on the front. All of these are, you open this giant box, you've got all this packaging inside of there as well. So those are all different ways that you can connect with the consumer. And the reason I want to kick off this class with like just the basics of primary, secondary, tertiary, and e-com is that all of these are packaging that you're going to encounter. You're going to have the opportunity to design. Um, and as we kind of move forward in future in future classes, I want to go ahead and we're going to dig into how to design for each of those, um, how to, you know, how to design for those, how to concept them, how to prep files for production, and what the actual manufacturing is going to look like for each of those processes. So everything from offset, offset print, flexo print, silk screening. You know, we see a lot of these little bottles here with like silk screening on them. You've got labels. You've got uh, flexo, like what you're seeing on some of this corrugated boxes over here. Uh, really want to, you know, Shaheen, you should really try a white claw. I, I hear all the girls go crazy over it. Um, <laughs> got a quick question here from Aaron. How do you feel e-com packaging and unboxing will affect retail? Well, I think, you know, if you think about e-com packaging, you have, you know, your, your wonderful experience, you know, brands are spending millions of dollars on, um, the online experience and walking you through the entire purchase process. So it's super frictionless. It's super seamless there. It's amazing. And you click purchase, <clears throat> you click buy now and you, you're super stoked about it. You're like, man, I just bought whatever I bought. Then there's like a day or to three days, um, uh, between when you purchase it and when you receive it. So what happens between within those three days is like life right? You've got a, you had a great time. You had a bad time. Who knows what happens in those three days. And then all of a sudden on your doorstep is this box. The box's job has to like immediately bring you back to that wonderful experience that you had in the purchase process. 
you know, it's got to validate the cost of the product. It's got to validate the fact that you went through the purchasing process and that you're excited. The outer box, like this at harvest box, you know, immediately it's got fruit, vegetables on the outside of it. It gives you the app harvest logo. It's like, it reminds you instantly what you purchased and app harvest. They, it's like a full high tech farming outfit. They do some amazing stuff with uh, food. Definitely recommend checking them out. But like, as soon as I see that box, it reminds me of what it is that I purchased and what's coming. So once I get into that box and I open it, you know, they greet you with, you know, color and messaging. And it's, it's like, you have to start that hype cycle again before the product. You know, if you get just a paper bag on your doorstep and you rip it open and then there's your product, it doesn't feel like there was a lot of care that went into it. So, you know, to answer your question in terms of has it changed already? I think it has. Um, and we'll kind of tackle like how to design that unboxing process to build the hype and all the different panels on a box to actually help you tell a story from the outside all the way to the product, including in educating the consumer on how to break that box down and recycle it. So great question. I think there's a lot, um, I think there's a lot of, <laughs> I think there's a lot to do with e -com that's that's happening. I just saw this question from Marco. If you're in packaging, you have this problem, right? You have just tons of packaging everywhere. You know, uh, you know, I'm married to packaging is, <laughs> is really what it comes down to. Um, so, you know, thanks, uh, thanks you, but really, you know, e-com, you've got to spend the money on the packaging. And from a design perspective, you really have to tell the story from the outside to the inside and get people pumped. You know, it's no different than this bottle of oil, right? When I'm walking down the aisle and I'm comparing whether I'm going to purchase, you know, spend six bucks or spend you know almost thirty dollars on on oil, I need to I need to be romanced, you know. I need you to take me out to dinner, you know, tell me I look good, uh, get me excited, not just be like, hey, here's some oil. Like this feels like a thirty dollar bottle of oil. This feels like the product in here is going to be quality, and even if the product inside doesn't taste good. The packaging has convinced me so much that I'm probably going to perceive the product in a different way and I'll convince myself that it's good. Now I've tried it, it's actually good, but maybe I'm wrong and uh, maybe I just convinced myself beyond that. But definitely looking forward to future classes with everybody here. Um, what I'm gonna do is next class, we're going to go through some terminology up front, spend a couple of minutes on terminology and then really dig into designing packaging. Um, so really excited for that. Um, any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And what I'd love to do is to make this interesting is I'm going to ask you to go ahead and share in the comments today. I want you to share photos of primary packaging, secondary packaging, tertiary packaging, and e-commerce packaging, you know, whether it's packaging that your company has produced, your brand has um, executed or, you know, your agency has designed. I want to see those four types of packaging and label them so that we can all learn because there's a ton of packaging that I didn't show. Uh, I'm sure there's a million of packaging that I, that I didn't cover, but these four are the main four that we're going to, we're going to tackle. Um, so I really appreciate it and uh, see you guys next week. Thanks you. Thanks Corey. Thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, really excited to keep, keep this going. Any questions, if you want to learn about anything else, Again, leave it in the comments and uh, we'll tackle it. Thank you so much, guys.